How much time had there been between when Carol and Benny had that conversation until Ken Miles actually got in the car to run the that test? That was only a, a few weeks more, and of course, at that point, you know, the, the word went around the whole shop that, you know, Benny Howard had said it wasn't going to work. So when we took the car out to Riverside for the first time with Ken Miles, you know, all we had was John Olson, uh, John Collins, uh, one engine guy, myself, Dave Friedman to photograph it, and of course Ken, and we went out there by ourselves. I mean, nobody else was interested. They all thought it was going to be a flop. Even Carol didn't make it out for the oh, first Oh, Carol wasn't, you know, I mean, it was like, this was just some dumb project that was going on in the corner. Ken Miles went out in the car the first time just to get a couple of warm-up laps on the car and um, said, what, what gear ratio do we have in this car? And we explained to Ken that uh, we'd have set the chassis up exactly like he'd wanted, exactly like our roadsters, so that we would have a parallel test with what the roadsters were. And he was kind of concerned with that. He said, okay, fine. He went out, made a few more laps, came back. The car was really, really quick right off, off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, came back in, asked about that gear ratio again. I said, are you certain on that gear ratio? And we said, yes. So we actually had the guys jack the car up and we marked on the, the rear wheel and we turned the rear wheel and got underneath and see how many times the drive shaft turned. And of course it was exactly where it has to be. So what was happening is he was getting so much more RPM out of the corners and so much more speed down the back chute that he thought that we were in lower gear. So the car was going faster. There's no speedometer in the car. Right. You know, there's only attack. Right. So he looked at the times and he knew right off the bat that you know we were gonna be fast. He went out, made a couple more laps. We were three and a half seconds a lap faster than right. we'd ever run before on the lap record on it. So he, he knew right away the car was gonna be successful, but there was still a problem. It was so good that we weren't getting enough traction at the back end. We needed more rubber. So he called Carol on the phone immediately and said, the car is very, very fast, and left immediately to go back. We packed up the car and headed back. We didn't do a whole a lot of testing on it. What he wanted to get done was he needed new rear tires because we knew we didn't have enough traction. So Carol, being the distributor for Goodyear Racing Tires, immediately called Tony Webner back in, at Goodyear and said, can you get us some new rear tires? We're gonna go to Daytona with this car. And Webner says, there's no way that we can get a new tire built for you because they had just come out with the new T3. That was Goodyear's entry into the sports car market. Mm -hmm. But he said, we have done one thing. They had already been working on the stock car program and they had designed a new front tire for the stock cars, which was the size that we needed, but it was a lot wider Certainly. than we wanted. So. Carol said, fine. They actually flew a couple of set of tires out. We mounted them up and we put them on the back end. And they, at that time, before the body was widened out, the tires actually stuck out beyond the side of the body on it. So if you look at the car when it first ran, we didn't have time to fix it. We just welded on, or just riveted on some spats here so that they would be legal. Sure. But it changed the car. It really made the improvement on it. The other really interesting thing is, is that the car had been built specifically for Ken Miles. And for some strange reason, Carol decided that Ken was not going to drive the car at Daytona. So he made the decision that Dave McDonald and Bob Holbert were going to drive the car. They had never driven the car at all. So we arrived at Daytona. Remember, Ken Miles had broken the lap record at Riverside with the car. So we arrive at Daytona. Bob Holbert gets in the car, goes right out, breaks the lap record. He's running against the Ferraris, he's pulling away from him, comes back in, tells Ken, who'd been made team manager, what's going on. So we start dropping the RPM on the car. We drop the RPM now so that we're going basically the same speed as the Ferraris. We're not faster. But then we checked our mileage and it was like 20 to 25% better depending on the so that was the way that we were going to win the race. All we had to do was run with the Ferraris and we could go much farther because our fuel efficiency was better. Mm -hmm. So we both, Holbert and Dave McDonald, broke the lap record. First time got in the car. So first time out at Riverside, 
Ken Miles breaks the record. First time we go to Daytona, both Holbert and McDonald break the lap record. So we're seven laps in the lead. We have a pit fire and the car is retired. So then we go to, down to Sebring. Again, we put Dave McDonald and Holbert in the car. They break the lap record there with the car. So the car was fast right out of the box, even with all of the compromises that we had to make. It didn't have the wing on it, didn't have the right tires on it. So you it. didn't run the wing at Sebring then? No, okay. no, no okay. Didn't, didn't have any wing at that time. Sebring is an interesting course because it's all pretty much straightaways, braking, turn corners and get out. So you don't have a real problem with real fast, fast turns with the back end lifting on the car. Mm -hmm. So it's lifting on the straights, but you can handle it. So the car wins at Daytona, or at Sebring. Sebring, you know. Actually, we'd uh, been leading. Uh, 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 Dan Gurney was leading in the Cobra Roadster down there and crashed in the middle of the night, and the car was destroyed. We were right behind. We were not racing against them because we were running one, two. So this car went into the lead, and we won. So winning at Sebring was the thing that really changed the whole program for us because at that point Ford Motor Company decided to come in and support the program. Prior to that point it had been primarily Goodyear's money that allowed us to build the car.